Here we are back with Marston Moore, um, Cromwell's victory. We are at, uh, we're halfway through the game. We're going to be starting turn seven here soon. Um, just wanted to provide a quick update. Um, let's see. Byron's right flank, or the Royalist right flank, uh, under Byron has collapsed. And Newcastle has been uh, rushed over there to help fill in the gap that has been caused by the continual pressure of um, let me see of Fairfax and Cromwell the center is seeing a lot of disruptions on either side a little bit of rallying here and there but at the moment the parliamentarian center is very disrupted but the royalist center can't seem to make getting traction to take advantage of the disrupted parliamentarians and on the far left of the royalist um, position Goring has still failed to make any progress his forces have now pulled back behind the ditch again historically his forces were able to cross the ditch and throw um, Fairfax's horse back towards Long Marston and around by the plump but in this game uh, they don't seem to have the strength to do so uh, anyway this is uh, the state of the game at the moment at the beginning of game turn 7 we're going to start rolling for visibility checks other than that that's um, pretty much it just slowly plodding along here just a quick shot of the game state at the middle turn, middle part of the ninth game turn, which would be the Royalist player turn coming up. Um, the Royalist player's right flank is being held now by foot. They have disrupted most of uh, the parliamentarian left flank. However, Cromwell is sweeping around past the white psych grove and is pushing across that small hilltop to get in around and behind the royalist center uh, and attack the exposed guns if possible the royalists have a choice to make either to go back and meet that threat by crossing the ditch again or trying to press on against the parliamentarian center because the parliamentarian left, although it's pretty well shattered at the moment, uh, is up on a hilltop with hills with slopes, which will have the combat strengths of the uh, attacking units, in this case the royalists. Uh, down here, the cavalry both just sit and stare at each other. Um, there's no way that Goring can affect any sort of um, flanking move or push the parliamentarian horse back so um, I don't think the game accurately reflects that or the royalists moving up and looting the baggage train as was done historically so we'll see could be just my bad play but the odds really just aren't there unless they want to make a series of attacks at one to two or so which you know may be necessary I've been doing one-to-ones for the most part now, and uh, they haven't been too bad as long as you roll low. Um, but up here on the parliamentarian left, um, the royalists have just, you know, smashed the horse and foot that was trying to envelop them. So, yeah. anyway, this is an update starting the Royalist player turn of turn nine. So we're getting close to a resolution here. And just a few more turns to go, and we'll see what happens. Okay, here we are at the beginning of turn 11. I'm going to go ahead and call the game because visibility has been um, at minimal for a couple of turns now, and it's most likely just going to stay that way. Um, 
There's my cool little um, play aid I made. Yes, thank you. Um, the Royalists have lost 68 strength points of units. The Parliamentarians have lost 40 strength points. Um, the Allies or par Parliamentarians have a demoralization point of 115, and the Royalists have one of 100. So the Royalists are closing in on their demoralization. And the Allies, oh, they have a ways to go, but with the visibility as it is, um, cannon fire can only go out two hexes, units' movement rates are cut in half, it's almost impossible to rally um, disrupted units, and neither side really has the strength to <clears throat> strike the decisive blow, so to speak. Over here in the back of the Royalist position, <clears throat> Cromwell and his forces managed to, you know, pass through that gap and engage a few of the Royalist uh, units under Rupert, but <clears throat> to no real effect. In fact, Cromwell's unit was destroyed and he had to uh, move to another unit uh, of his command. So, and then there's just nothing going on in the center. Neither side wants to attack the hills or attack the ditch because that just immediately halves your uh, combat ability. So um, I'm going to wrap it up here at the beginning of turn 11, the 9 o'clock turn. As far as I can tell, it's pretty much a draw, although the <clears throat> allies have a little bit higher score, but um, probably about a 2 to 1 margin. But I'm not really going to count, you know, count points and stuff uh, for victory. I don't really care. Um, it's just so much fun I had with the game, and I had a pretty good time. And I will probably play this one again um, way down uh, the line. So anyway, I'm going to move on to uh, bigger and smaller things. So catch you later.